All right, this is video 17, and this should be pretty short. They're just instructions for uh, the argument finding exercise, which is just another exercise that we're doing, but I wanted to be sure that uh, you took the time to do it, uh, do it well. So the short version of the exercise is really short. Uh, your next reading is the Crito, and while you're reading it, I want you to find an argument, write it out in standard form, put your name on it and turn it in. Give it to me on the Dropbox. Um, I'm gonna spell this out a bit longer though. Um, so in previous classes, uh, you've been introduced to the idea of argument, right? An argument is a connected series of statements, which are the premises, designed to convince the audience of another statement, the conclusion. So you need to find an argument in the Crito, right? Um, one of the things that I have said is that philosophical dialogues are fundamentally about argument and character. You have people who represent philosophical worldviews, but also have personality traits that kind of in, uh, embody what that worldview is like, and those people give arguments to each other, right? So uh, you should be able to then find an argument, in fact, a lot of arguments in uh, the, uh, in the dialogue that you're reading, in the Crito. Now, the argument you find may be spread out throughout the dialogue, like the person may be gradually introducing premises until finally they get to the conclusion, or it may just be a few quick sentences. They give it right away. Um, either way, please indicate where in the dialogue you find the premises using the marginal numbers on the side, the Stephanus numbers that we've been using all along. So, I mean, here's an example. Um, uh, in, uh, in Euthyphro, Socrates gives an argument that looks like this. Premise one, horse training uh, is a way that the expert handles horses and it aims to benefit horses. Premise two, same for dog training. Premise three, same for cattle herding. Then, the, then we get an intermediate conclusion or a sub-conclusion. If piety is the way that experts attend to the gods, they must benefit the gods. But piety cannot benefit the gods because the gods are perfect. Therefore, um, piety cannot be a way experts attend to the gods. So um, that's just spread out around 13a through c um, in that dialogue. And there are different ways you can represent it. But this is, uh, this is one way, it's the sort of thing that I want you to turn in. So if this was a live version of this class, I would have peer response. Um, uh, and we're not doing that this time. However, I want you to bear in mind these questions because they will help you with your own argument. So if you're responding to a peer, I'm gonna ask you who is the speaker in your argument? Uh, in, in your peers' argument. You need to ask that about yourself, right? It, your speaker's either going to be Crito or Socrates. But sometimes if people aren't used to reading dialogues, you might find that the, you're actually putting together statements from two different characters. And that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. Your, um, state, your argument should be something that was presented by one character to the other, right? Um, be sure of the conclusion. So when you're evaluating a peer's argument, you want to ask what, what is the conclusion of the argument? In general, to know an argument, you have to grab it by the conclusion. That's the first thing that you want to think about, right? Um, okay, uh, you want to be sure, well, you just ask yourself, is this uh, argument given in one speech or spread out over several speeches? The last two points are, um, things that I want you to think about for your own argument. Is the argument circular and, and are the premises relevant? So one of the, a common problem that people have in reading Socrates and reading Plato, because he repeats himself a lot, is you wind up with arguments where uh, the premises are the same as the conclusion. And when you've done that, you've represented the argument wrong. So let me just talk about um, the fallacy of circular reasoning for a second. 
Uh, circular reasoning is a kind of fallacious argument uh, that is a bad argument that appears to be good, where the premise is either a rewording of the conclusion or something that would only be believed by someone who already believes the conclusion. So you're just repeating your conclusion as if it was a premise. And the point of this is that it can't convince anyone. Um, and so there was a meme, this is from a while ago, but you might remember there used to be a show on the History Channel where this guy with weird hair insisted that ancient aliens built everything. Um, and uh, so one parody of his argument says, well, if ancient aliens didn't exist, then how did they build everything? The premise here is that ancient aliens built everything, uh, therefore they must exist. But of course you wouldn't believe that the ancient aliens built everything unless you already believed they existed. So the argument is, is circular. So that's just a warning, right? Don't represent Socrates or Crito's arguments as circular. Um, and that's a danger that you can fall into because there's a fair amount of repetition in these dialogues. So you need to be careful about it. Great. So um, read the Crito, find an argument, submit the argument to the Dropbox, and then I've got a, di uh, a video on the Crito.